Hi everybody, my name is Becca and I'm one of the tutors here at Chegg. I tutor physics, math, and astronomy, but today I'm going to talk to y'all about a law of physics called Coulomb's Law. So back in the 1700s, people noticed that materials that had an electric charge applied to them exerted a force, some sort of interaction between uh, themselves but there wasn't really a good way to quantify what that force was. So a French physicist by the name of Coulomb came up with a way to quantify that interaction between two charges. And what he did is he considered two point charges on a line and considered what the force, the electric force between them depends on. So what he figured out was that that force First of all, we know that forces are fields, and in this case, we um, consider our force as a vector. And it's a vector that doesn't point in any arbitrary direction. The vector is actually pointing along the line that connects those two points. The straightest line that connects those points is where our force is going to be directed. That force depends on a bit of um, constants. We have 1 over 4 pi times... Um, something called epsilon naught. Now epsilon naught is known as the permittivity of free space. It's a constant that we use um, a lot of the time in electromagnetism and it's actually very useful in calculating the speed of light. But for now, what we can do is we can bundle that entire thing into one constant called Coulomb's constant that's known as k. I'll talk about k in a second. Now k is going to be multiplied by the first charge, which is multiplied by the second charge. And the whole thing is going to be divided by the square of the distance between them, or r. And we know that, um, just for a sanity check, we know that our force is pointing along the direction of the unit vector between them. So we can rewrite that simply as k times q1, q2, over r squared. Now k, the value for k, is a known constant. Usually you don't have to memorize this for tests. It's generally given, but just in case, it's approximately 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. And what's important here are the units for k. So the units are kind of funny. They're given as newtons, which is our force unit, times meters squared meters being our distance unit, all divided by Coulomb squared. Now, so we have Coulomb's law, we have Coulomb's constant, and we have Coulomb as a unit of charge. So as long as our charges are in Coulombs, our distances are in meters, we're going to get a force that is in newtons, and that's pretty standard units for now. An important thing to recognize is that this is a force um, a force relationship that's an inverse square law. And what that means is that the squared quantity right here, this r squared, is in the denominator. And so suppose I have two, um, two electrically charged items. And what an inverse square law means um, in this case is that as I move these two items closer and closer and closer and closer together, meaning R gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, the force between them gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Now there is some limit on that, but that limit takes us down into the quantum realm, and that's far beyond the scope of this talk. So for now, we can um, visualize two charges getting closer and closer and closer and closer together, and that force between them getting larger and larger and larger and larger. So how do we apply this law to a problem that you might see like this one? Well, suppose you have an array of four charges in a square. We have two positive charges here, and then we have two negative charges here, the red dots. And the question asks, what is the net force on Q2, this charge right here of minus three coulombs? So for this, we're gonna use what we call the law of superposition. And all that means is that your net force vector is gonna be equal to the sum of all the different forces acting on that charge. And in this case, we have three different external forces acting on this Q2 charge. First of all, we have a force from the first charge on the second charge, and we can call that vector F12. We also have a force from the third charge acting on the second charge, and we can call that vector F32. 
And finally, we have a force from the fourth charge acting on the second charge. So we can call that force vector F42. Okay, so how do we find what the, um, what the vectors F12, F32, and F42 are? Well, we can use Coulomb's law. So let's start with the force between the first and second charges, just these two guys right here. I'm going to keep everything in terms of k just for simplicity and we'll plug k in at the very end of the problem so that we um, have an actual value. But the first charge, um, rather the first force is going to be k times the first charge. We have a charge of 5 coulombs. And then that second charge we have a charge of negative 3 coulombs. And the distance between those two charges is given in meters. It's given as one meter. So that's pretty simple. Make sure, though, be very careful that you know what your units are. In this problem, our charges are given in coulombs and our distances are given in meters, but that's very seldom the case. Sometimes you'll get charges in nanocoulombs or microcoulombs and um, distances in nanometers, centimeters, micrometers, whatever. Just make sure you convert all of your units to begin with. In this problem, we got lucky. So that ends up giving us negative 15k, and our unit of force is newtons. Now, notice that there's a negative sign on that force. That does not mean that there's a negative amount of force being applied. I don't even know what that would mean. But what it means is it gives the force a direction. Notice that you have a positive charge and a negative charge over there. And remember that opposites attract. So the negative actually says that we have an attractive force. Um, effectively pulling those two charges together. So what that's going to mean is that our force vector is going to be in the direction of that first charge right there. And it's going to have a magnitude of 15 K newtons. Okay? So that's the first vector. Let's figure out what our second vector is. We have F32. Three, okay, that's a three. Three, two, and we have, of course, our Coulomb's constant, okay? Our amount of charge on Q3 is nine Coulombs, and of course, same thing over here, our amount of charge on the second charge is minus three Coulombs. And the distance between them, once again, is one meter, so we have one squared. Okay, so, that's going to give us a very similar result as um, we got in the first answer. We have a minus 27k newtons. And once again, that negative is directional. That tells us that we have two opposite charges attracting each other. So the force vector will be in the direction of that third charge. And it will have a magnitude of... 27k. Because again, the negative just means what direction it's pointing in. So finally, we need to find the magnitude um, and the direction of F42. So again, we have our k. We have a charge of negative 2 coulombs on that fourth charge. And on that second charge, we again have a charge of negative 3 coulombs. But this time, be really careful. The distance between these two charge, charges is not one meter. We need to find out what that distance is. It's going to be the length of this right here. And what we have right here is a triangle with um, legs that are one meter long. So what we can do is we can solve for the hypotenuse of that triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. So we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Our a and b are our legs of length one meter. So we know that 1 squared plus another 1 squared equals our c squared. Which is where c is just our hypotenuse length here. We know that 1 squared is just 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 is c squared. And if 2 is c squared, then to get 
c by itself, we just need to take the square root. And that means that the square root of 2 is equal to c. So this length right here is going to be the square root of 2. So that means that down in the bottom here, we put the square root of 2. And we square that. So up in the numerator, we have negative 2 times negative 3. And that gives us a positive 6. Don't forget our k. And in the bottom, um, we need to make sure that we square that quantity. Be very careful to square your quantity in the bottom. We have square root of 2 squared. That square root and square just cancel, and we have 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3k. So we have a force of 3k newtons. Now notice that we have a positive force here. Um, that's because we have two charges of this same sign. They're both negative charges. And so instead of being an attractive force, this is going to be a repulsive force. And that force factor, instead of pointing towards Q4, it's going to be pointing away from Q4. And it's going to have a magnitude of 3K. All right, so let's zoom in on that Q2 and kind of take stock of what we have so far. We know that the net force is going to be the addition of these three vectors right here. But we can't just add 3K plus 15K plus 27K and have that be our answer because remember, these are not scalar quantities. These are vectors and they have direction and that means we need to add them like vectors. So the easiest way to do that is to focus on these two vectors right here. And we're going to add these two vectors together. And what we're going to do first is we're just going to shift this 27K right over here because we want to add vectors um, head to toe. So we have a 27K right there. And that means that the resulting vector of this addiction, addition is going to be this vector right here. And again, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what that um, what this vector is going to be. So one of our legs is 15K. We can square that. Then we have 27K. Square that. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where C is going to be the length of this vector right here. 15 squared is 225. K squared is K squared. 27 squared is 729, and we have our k squared term equals c squared. Now since these are both k squared terms, we can combine them, add them together, and what we get is 954 k squared equals c squared. And ultimately, we want the length of this vector, so um, what we need to do is just take the square root of both sides, Square root of 954 is not a pretty number. You get roughly 30.89. Um, 30 I don't know that off the top of my head. Um, square root of k squared is just k. So we know that the resulting vector of adding these two vectors together is going to be in this direction, 30.89k. So let's update ourselves. Let's look at this, um, this Q2 charge. And now we have a little force vector 3k pointing in this direction. And we also have a bigger force vector pointing in the opposite direction of 30.89k. 30.89k. So this simplifies the problem a ton because we have, um, in one direction, we have a force of 3K, but in the exact opposite direction, we have a force of 30.89K. So the net force here is going to be equal to the difference between them because their, di um, their directions are different. So our net force is going to be 30.89K minus... 3k, which of course gives us 27.89k. And if we finally plug in our value for k so we can get our real, um, real number, 
you have 27.89 times 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. And that gives us approximately the enormous 2.5 times 10 to the 11th newtons. Acting on Q2, in this direction. And we can leave it big because it's a big force. Um, so what we have is we have that Q2 charge and we have a force of 2.5 times 10 to the 11 Newtons acting on it. So that's your net force on Q2. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions regarding physics, math, algebra, astronomy, whatever, feel free to hit me up at the link below that will take you straight to my profile on Chegg and you can send me a message from there. Thanks for joining me and have a great rest of the semester. Bye!